so this is pretty much Dark Forces 2. All you pretty much do is run fast and do a bunch of the jumps and stuff. In level 1, you kind of run pretty slow in the beginning, and you also have to collect all the secrets in the level, because in this game it has a power-up system, which powers up your force powers, and one of the force powers is force speed, which lets you go really fast. So I want to get force speed as soon as possible, so that's pretty much why I'm getting all the secrets in level 1, because it's the Real fastest one. Real quick before you start, you sell Mary, we've got to... Alright, just... Just go. Alright. Oh my goodness. Alright, so I had to... I missed a little elevator here, so it's alright. I'm just getting more secrets. And I have to make sure I get the secret by the time the elevator leaves, so that's why I was killing all those guys really quick. Unless you get stuck like that. Unfortunately, you only kill Jarek in this game, but you don't even kill him with the lightsaber, so it'll be interesting when I get there. So this level is kind of luck based, just because there's so many enemies and you're running in really tight corners, so it's really easy to get stuck somewhere, or the enemies just block your path, like right here. Here I'm just shooting uh, into this way just to make sure that the NPCs don't get in my way and I try to hit this button over here. And over here I fall to these boxes because the last secret's over here, or the second to last secret. And I also get thermal detonators which are pretty much grenades which I use in the next level. So this is level 2, it's the, the longest level in the game, and it's mostly just running, but there's actually some pretty cool grenade jumps, they're kind of kind of tough to do. Uh, the last marathon that I was in for this, I just found out about them, so I was pretty bad at them. I'm still kind of bad at them, I consider them one of the harder tricks in the game. We'll see how it goes. So I need to make sure. I also need to make sure I, don't, I have a lot of shields, just because I'm damaging myself a lot through this level. Getting through those guys is kind of tough sometimes because they're really big and they get in your way. Those are morning guards that the fat guys that I jumped over. So I kill this guy over here, and this is the first grenade jump. I just got it. And that usually, that saves only about 10 seconds, and every time you miss it, it wastes 5 seconds. And next uh, skip, usually you have to get a red key so you can open this door, but you can actually just jump through the window to open the button. To move this little platform so you can, or to open the door so you can go to the next part of the level. Alright, so now I'm getting uh, more gear. Thermal detonators to do the next grenade jump over here. This one's a little more difficult than the first one. Alright. Ah, missed it. Dang. It's so bad. There we go, got it. Second try. That's pretty good. So, yeah, like I said, every time you miss it, it wastes about five seconds. Cause, but overall, it saves about 30 seconds because you gotta wait for this block to fall down. 
and so you can walk across and you also saw me jump across the gap usually you have to wait for that block to, to fall down two more times so you can walk across so overall that saves a, a whole bunch of time and next I have this usually these elevators they're kind of random but if in the position they are and sometimes you can walk on them you can get there in time so you can ride them but if you miss them you can just walk along the side and you don't really have to worry about it too much Next, I'm just killing these guys while I'm waiting for an elevator. Just to get some supplies. The main supply I really want is thermal detonators right there. As you can see, they give, they give explosions and they're pretty useful. Usually, I want to have You need six more. There's pretty much six that you need to finish the rest of the game. But spare ones are always nice and these uh, grands usually drop them. So I need to hope one of them drops them. There's usually a grand up here that you kill. He drops them, but I can't really get them. Just because of uh, where they fell. And then here we have a Rodian. He shoots you. Sometimes he like blocks. His lasers like shoot you and they send you off really bad. They stop your momentum. And I also did get a thermal detonator for that one grand, so that's good. Alright, so this is level 3. It's kind of quick. There's not really... There's a whole bunch of jumps. There's nothing too exciting. First jump is coming up over here. You try and jump across this gap to get through there. It usually falls the next one. This is a window jump. It skips you having to find a key, which went really well. The next jump is a thermal detonator jump. This skips you pretty much having to do the main puzzle on the level, where you have to find a whole bunch of keys and a lever to, to raise the water so you can skip. As you can see right there, you can just thermal detonator boost yourself up there. Now, I'm almost done with the level. I just gotta kill these, whatever they are. I just like, call them dragonflies. I haven't really researched what they really are. Alright, and so now I'm in level 4, and you just saw me put a point in 4 speed. And this is pretty much the main reason why we got all the secrets, or I got all the secrets in level 1, you guys didn't do anything. And I just, unfortunately you can't use it that much in this level, because you just got your Jedi power, so you don't have as much, I guess, I guess you'd want to call it mana or force energy in the beginning. But that increases as the game progresses. So walking along this water actually speeds you up, and then jumping over here is like a trigger that speeds you up even more. I gotta be careful not to have these guys shoot me. They can they can stop my momentum, and then I can like fall and die. It's really annoying. So now using speed again, jumping across this gap over here. All right. So now you just gotta be careful on this water because it has push triggers that can it speeds you up, but it can also speed you up in the wrong way. And here's the big trick in the level. Okay, cool. It's a thermal detonator jump. Thanks to level 1 force speed and the, the boost you get from a thermal detonator, you can actually make that jump across the gap and it saves about 40 seconds or so. It saves me having to jump in the water and raise some water levels again. So here I'm just killing those guys to get a bowcaster. They call it a crossbow in this game. It's useful for the next level. Alright, I'm just doing a little bit of water skimming. It's pretty much just jumping as you hit the water. And I'm just doing four speed one more time. And here, there's another... I need to make sure I have enough low enough shields so that at the end I can kill myself. So I throw two TDs right here, and I kill myself. So in this game, your your character can be boosted by explosives, and it can also... And your corpse can trigger level ends and go through doors. So pretty much I just kill myself and blast myself to the end of the level. Now I just gotta, the game thinks I beat the level and I just gotta wait for it to go to the next level. So now we have level 3 force speed, and now I can, the run starts going pretty fast. Here I'm just firing over there to try and aggro one of the, the grands so he's not my way over here. Fortunately, he's still in my way. It's not that much time, it's maybe a second or so that you can save if he's not in your way. So then I'm gonna do my final TD jump right here. Jump over here to this, to this push trigger and then the level's over. Alright, 
So now this level has a bunch of weapons that you get throughout it. It's really good. Alright, so first one is the uh, sequencer charges. They're pretty much just the uh, mines that you use, and I'll be using them in, a, in the future levels. The next thing is I'm going over here to get the secret over here. One, the secret has shields, a uh, back to tank, and it also has a rail charge, which I can use to do a bunch of rocket jumps pretty much. First rocket jump will be right here, actually, just to, so I don't have to ride the rest of the elevator. And here I'm jumping across this gap. Usually you're supposed to like raise a bridge and walk on it or something, but you can actually just jump across to get up here. Next one is a rocket jump up here. Next, I just open the doors right here, and then this lowers this little vent that you have to jump into. Oh yeah, I missed it once. So usually, if you don't get this first try, it, if you wait for the the block to come up all the way, it wastes like 30, 13 seconds if you wait for it. But doing that saves about time, a little bit of time, obviously. And I failed a couple of times, so maybe waste like three or four seconds. And here I'm just counting right now. I gotta count seven slashes. So I'm just counting because I'm waiting for the elevator since there's so many enemies and I need to kind of preserve my shields for the next few levels. So that's why I was just hiding under there and counting. And here I'm putting uh, three points in the force jump. And this is the first boss fight in the game. So this is Yun. He's pretty easy. He has a little mechanic in the beginning where he either force jumps in the beginning or he just stands there. I kind of want him to force jump because I'll force jump as well and hit him while he's in midair and it saves a little bit of time. And it's really annoying to fight him on that slope because his hitbox is kind of weird. So I got bad luck and he hasn't... There it is right there. So here I saw I tried to hit him and I did hit him. He only takes three uh, swings to hit and here there's some shields over here. For the next level that are pretty important. And this is Palace Escape. It's pretty, it was pretty much the most important. It's the most important level in the game. And I'm choking. Alright, so this might be a little bit bad because my shields are a little low. Yeah, alright. So I just did a rocket jump across that roof over there. So now I'm just trying to position myself to this death warp, pretty much. Alright. One, two, three, four. Putting all my sequencers down, those are the mines. And like I said before, your corpse can be boosted by explosives, and they can triple, trigger level ends. And here I'm trying to blast myself to the end of the level, pretty much. So I kill myself with the, the rocket launcher, or the rail detonator. And then the five sequencers explode and boost me to the end of the level, and I trigger the end, and the game thinks I beat the level. So then all I had to do was wait for this 34 second cutscene to play out, and then it, I move on to the next level. So then after this level, you get uh, level 4 force speed and force jump, so then this is when the run gets pretty fun. Alright, so this is a fuel station. It's the second longest level in the game. It's a whole bunch of running and waiting because you have to open these fuel doors and you'll see them in, in a little bit. Here I just got uh, an invincibility shield. So that keeps, that gives me shields against uh, all damage, but it doesn't protect me from impact damage, which is like running through the wall. And in this game, since you have, you're running at such high speeds, you can actually damage yourself by hitting into the wall. So it's kind of a risk that you have to take by running at level 4 force speed. So here I'm just, um, I'm pretty much just like emptying some fuel state, fuel gauges, I guess, engines, I suppose, so that I can walk to the next part. And here I'm just opening doors. So this is pretty much the slow part of the level where you have to open and close all these doors. And here I'm just getting back to them. Back to pretty much is, it's a free 30 health. You can only carry five of them at the same time. And then when I open and close these doors, I need to make sure that when I try and open the next door, the previous door is closed or the alarm will sound off and I have to wait a little bit and waste a little bit of time.
but when I try and close this door, I can actually spam it, as you can see right here. I can spam it, but I'm not going to because I know it's not there yet. So yeah, I gotta wait for this next door to close, and then this is the last door I really have to wait for. The next ones are pretty quick to open. Now we're going into the, it's pretty much like a bunch of falling tubes. It kind of reminds me of uh, episode five when Luke falls down, just those after he gets his arm chopped off and stuff. But yeah, so now I'm also making sure I'm getting more sequencers right there, and I gotta get this concussion rifle from this trained ocean. It's pretty much an important gun for the next level. And here I'm switching my my rail debt, and I'm gonna do a forced rocket jump up the up this elevator, so I don't have to wait. For that, and then I'm at 16 minutes. About. That's all right. It's pretty mediocre time for there. But now I'm just waiting for these uh, to do. I'm counting these checkers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I can force jump and make it all the way to the top. So I use all my force and make it to the top just in time, and then you go up here, and then you kill this uh, Ugnaught pretty much. Sometimes he blocks you, and if you fall down there, it wastes a whole bunch of time. Alright, so this level, you do just a bunch of, a whole lot of running in this one, but you also see it to see the, the concussion rifle, which is pretty much an AoE, an AoE gun. You saw me hit that door with the lightsaber to open it up. Here, I'm switching the concussion rifle. Get the red key, that allows me to open the next door. Fall down over here. Concussion that force field so I can progress. Do the force jump up here and shoot that one. Kill those guys at the end. Alright, it's cool. Shoot these so I can go through this field. And then I'm gonna float to through this window through that thing. This skips me having to open. This skips me having to ride that elevator. And then when you go back, you don't have to ride it down, so to speak. And that saves about seven seconds. And here I'm putting one in for seeing. It lets me see pretty much. It let it stops bosses from blinding me and going invisible pretty much. So I can see what they're doing. So this is Gorkin Pick, I don't remember Gorkin Pick, and then you pretty much just hit them both at the same time, that's really all you gotta do. And you'll see a little blue right here for sight. So the, the, the little one likes to go invisible a lot, so I'm gonna make sure. Uh, his hitbox is pretty weird, especially when he gets right there, so it's really bad that he got right there. But then that's it, that's all you really gotta do. Alright, so this is Escape with a Map. I'm pretty sure it's... Ooh, I don't even know what level it is. It's probably 12. So pretty much, usually you have to collect a whole bunch of keys in this level. But I'm actually going to skip getting any of these keys at all. Just by doing a whole bunch of force jumps. First jump is coming up right here. Jump to this door, jump to this bridge. Force jump from that bridge to this bridge, and jump to this door. So pretty much I just skipped getting a whole bunch of keys in the, the entire purpose of the entire level. And here I triggered the level ends, and now the level, the, the level ends in 13 seconds, so in the meantime I just get some more back to, to heal me later in the run. I'm pretty sure I'm full. Yeah, I have five, so I'm good. Alright. Alright, so, so this one I have to destroy a bunch of, I don't know, generators I suppose? So I can disable the force field and progress to the next uh, section of the level. That's what you're seeing me doing right here. And here I'm getting some more back then a shield, because I need to preserve as much shields as I need or as I can towards the end of the level, because I'm gonna do a, a it's it's more you have to see it kind of thing. I'm pretty much gonna boost myself with two explosives to prevent me from having to ride an elevator towards the end. And here I'm just doing a force jump to this hole. 188, that's pretty good shields. So they kill the stormtrooper. Put this uh, sequencer charge right there, and then 
force jump as the sequencer is exploding, and then I boost myself with a rail charge the rest of the way. And that's the end. And here I'm putting uh, three points in the dark side. Since this is a dark side run, just because it's faster, dark side is actually faster than the light side end, because in the boss fights like this one, you'd have to wait for... You don't have to actually watch these in the... And some of the later ones are actually shorter in the dark side run than light side. For every cord of muscle, there is and this guy has no legs because they got chopped off in the beginning or something by some guy. And now he's angry or something. He floats. So this boss, after you hit him a certain number of times, he moves. He has like stages to him, like phases, I suppose. And as you hit him more, he moves to like different parts of the map. So I'm going to try and pretty much I'm going to try and bloody block him behind this tower so he can't run. He can't run away, and I can just kill him right here. There we go. So now we get the dark side in, and pretty much the guy is upset that we're going dark side, and he yells at you. But who cares? And then this is a falling ship. Pretty much uh, you're pushed into a ship, and then you gotta escape it before it crashes. And so it makes it the level kind of all wonky with the gravity and stuff, and that's it. You just press this button, your ship lowers, and you just jump across to it. Usually you would walk around to the other side of where that door is, so you can just walk across it, but you can actually just jump across, and then the level ends when you, when you reach your ship, pretty much. There's a trigger. And now the graphics are really messed up, but here you fight Yen again. And this is why Dark Side is faster. These cutscenes right here before the bosses are extremely short now. In Light Side, you wouldn't actually even fight this guy again. You'd fight a different boss. And Yun is actually kind of easier to kill than she is. There it is. And that's the end. I get that. Alright, so this is one of the downsides of being Dark Side. You don't have this, uh,. This force power for the light side that you get, it's called protection, and it pretty much gives you extra shield, so you can do a whole bunch of rocket boosts for free, pretty much. But that's alright, I can do them anyways. Alright. First one's right here, you just do a little, that was pretty much my favorite trick, you get a rail charge on the force field, turn off the force field, it still floats there, and then you do a rocket jump off of it. You Force jump as it explodes and then do a rail charge to get you up the rest of the way. Here, one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. I'm just counting those little lights on the wall so I know when to force jump. And here I'm counting little brown spots on the wall. One, two, three. So I can do another rocket jump. And here there's a little bit of luck in the game. This Sometimes this door is closed, and when it's closed you gotta go this way. You gotta go an alternate route. It wastes like 8 or so seconds, it's a little unfortunate. Alright, go over here. Now I just gotta turn off this like wind tunnel or something. So I'm just getting more supplies and shields so I can do one more rocket jump right here. Jump over here, and then I gotta turn on the wind so I can actually float to the end of the level. Up here, do a force jump up here, destroy this grate, and that's the end of the level. And this is a descent into the valley. I think this is 17, I don't really know what level. Pretty much, I'm, what I'm doing in this level is I'm getting a key so I can lower this box so I can progress to the, the next part of the level. So pretty much you go through this whole part of the level twice because you're trying to get some key so you can go into the control room. The key is right here. There it is. So I'm getting another shield because usually you'd have a persuasion at this but lets you go invisible so these enemies wouldn't even attack you in light side. So that's one of the downsides for doing dark side. You don't have that force power. That's alright. The cutscenes are more than enough. To benefit for you. Alright, now the box is over here, you open the door to lower the box, and then you can actually clip through the box, and then you fall down and break your fall on that little slope right there. Open the next door, get some more sequencers, because I'm definitely going to need those for the next few levels. Alright, go over here, I'm gonna 
uh, heal just in case I fall down here. Do another concussion boost. It's pretty much like a rocket. It's pretty much like a rocket jump, except that the the height is a little bit less, and it gives you, it deals you less damage, pretty much. So it's it's good for parts like this. That's the end of this level. Blah. So this one, this level, you're pretty much just running. There's a little puzzle in the middle of the level, and you'll see that coming out. Turn on this elevator, kill this guy just in case to get his rail charges. Just fall down into this hole, take a whole bunch of damage. Who's back to here? Run through this, run through that. There's a little Kel Dragon. Does a lot of damage if you stay there too long. He like bites you or something. I don't know how much damage it actually is, but I'm sure it's a lot. And here's the first puzzle. I have to hit these two times each pretty much. And then go to the next section. And then I gotta open this five times. You can actually skip the, having to do all of this, but it takes a whole bunch of luck. So I'm just gonna do it, and then I hit that five times and go to the next part. Oh god. Get my rail debt. I have seven, that's good. I'm gonna have to end up fighting an ATSC real soon, so I need to use that to kill him. He's right here. It usually takes four shots to kill him, but sometimes five. I don't know what causes that. It's kind of random, but then this guy comes over here and he has the key to the end of the level. I've been doing this game for about two years almost. And this is Bach. So this is another boss. And instead of fighting with a lightsaber, we're going to kill him with sequencers. So put him down there, and I just wait for him. And the weird thing about this, it's the it's not the explosion itself that kills him, it's the fact that I'm boosting his speed so much that when he hits the ceiling he takes so much damage he dies. And that's how I killed him. And here we have Jarek, this is the final boss, we're also not fighting him with uh, our lightsaber, we're doing sequencers again. So then I go over here, and time is almost coming up, I put my 10 sequencers right here and pray that he doesn't come too soon, like right there. So then he did that, so I gotta start over. Alright, put him right here. And once I lay them down, I save. And hope he comes across. It's really luck part right here. And that's the end of the game, so that's time, pretty much. And that's pretty much Dark Forces 2. I killed him pretty much accelerating his speed and killing him when he hit the ceiling. Yeah, so that's that. So I hope you enjoyed, and hope you guys enjoy the next runs as well.